Hello friends and welcome to a quick tutorial about how to make a button closure. I'm Andrea with Journals for Life and I do this often. I make these button closures. I do have some albums that I put my books in. Um, they're in the shop and you can put up to four in the albums but sometimes you just want to sit them out and um, let people look through them. Sometimes I'll tie it with some bias tape or some ribbons like this, but a very popular technique is just to, you know, put a little elastic closure with a button. So this um, gold came on a Christmas gift, you know, one of those box sets, so I saved it. So I, I just think gold is pretty. Works really well here. This is what it looks like. And then I have this one and it's a it's a large button. I think I got it from the dollar spot from Michaels. I think it came with two um, and I've had it for a long time. And I also had this um, elastic cord pack. I'm not really sure what it was for. It was for necklaces or um, I really don't remember, but I picked up a four pack and it had four different colors on it. Um, I do have some coming to the shop um, some different color elastic cords, um, but you can also get it from saving them from gifts. And then also you can buy a roll if you want some, or you could probably buy less than this. I just have a lot big, I, I used to make my own. I still do sometimes, but not often, not as much. I have a manufacturer now, but I used to make my own, um, books or my own travel notebook covers, I would sew them and so I needed elastic cord. So I've got a lot of that in stock. You may not have that on hand, but you can buy, you know, some cord online. I And like I said, I'll have some in the shop soon. I'm going to stock some buttons and some cord since I'm showing you this tutorial and you may like it, I'll pop some up in the shop for sale. So. Without further ado, how do I do it? Well, there's a couple ways that I do it. So I'll show you an, uh, an easy way and then maybe an easier way. So see how it's threaded through? How do you know how much you need? So I'll talk about that. This one was threaded, threaded through the same way. Looks like I, so you could do a couple things. You can either leave the knot on at the end and then loop the knot over like that because it's gonna hide it. But if that bothers you, and it bothered me on this one um, for it to look like that, so what you can do is you loop it through and you just put the knot behind the button. That way you have this nice, pretty, clean looking loop that you just hook over your button, right? So how do we measure the elastic? So there's a couple ways to do it. You can either hold it and you're gonna go around, let's see, let me remember, two times. Okay, so that's one, two, and you cut it. And what you'll do is I'll kind of test it. So I'll put the ends together. You know, I'm going to tie the knot right there. Let's see if it goes around. Okay. That looks perfect. So let's use this button. So if you have four holes, you'll want to do one on the diagonal. Okay. So you put your elastic cord through, you pull it all the way through, you're going to hold the ends, and there's enough, you don't have to get it too close to the end here, that really frustrates me trying to tie it. You have enough to loop it around your finger and tie a knot real, real tight. So you should have maybe an inch of cord left, you want to pull it real, real tight, cut it off. Cut off the two ends like that. And you can either have the knot on it like that because it doesn't show. 
you can't see it really. So you can either leave the knot on the end or like I said earlier, if that knot really bugs you, pull it back through and put the knot behind the button. Oops, just like that. So then, let's see. There's one. And it looks like that. Okay. That's one way to measure it. The other way to measure it is uh, where's my other book? Okay. Instead of wrapping it around, if you don't like that, you can measure your book length. Your book length. And that should be enough. Two book lengths wide. Just kind of wrap it around and see. Yes, that works. Um, I cut a little bit more because it's re it's better to cut more than less. So I cut just a little bit more so I have enough to tie it here on the end. Oops, let's put the let's put the button on first. Alright, so if you want the knot to not show let's see you have to pull the cord like that so let's do that with this one that a little tight cut the ends off okay and so you're going to pull one of these until that knot is behind it just like that okay so then you hold your button and you have a nice clean loop oops I'm butterfingers today. All right, and that's pretty much it. You can leave your button in the middle, do this X pattern, you know, or you can have it on the edge like this. If it's wide enough, you can have it like that. If you have a smaller button, sometimes the smaller buttons, um, you can't get the elastic through. So do know that you need a thinner elastic. But there you have it, and that's how I make one. And so I when I come across vintage buttons or sometimes at the thrift store or um, garage sales or whatnot, I'll pick up old vintage buttons and this is an old one and it just looks really neat just as a closure on your book. You know? Look how cute that looks. I'll probably use that for my uh, May. I think there's a lot of yellow in that kit. All right, friends, well, there you have it. That's how you make a button closure with a big button and some elastic cording. So let me see what you make. Hope you like that. Bye.